Good evening. I know everything looks different. I am not in my normal place where I do the video, but I did the whole lesson in another particular place where I normally sit, and it didn't take at all, and it wouldn't capture it, so I couldn't send it out to you. So here I am. I am in my office. We're going to take two on the last chapter, chapter nine. Let me just remind you, uh, before we get too far into this, that um, you today you should have received the tests for Chapter 8. I need that back in by Friday uh, of this week. Also, you should be finishing up with your essays. I have had one turned in. Uh, I need your essays by this Friday along with your, your tests that you just got in your emails. Uh, so that the grades might be put in. I will be sending you the test, the last tests uh, on Chapter 9 um, this coming Friday so that you will have that. I need you to do tests number nine, on Chapter 9 and turn it back into me no later than next Tuesday because grades have to be in by Tuesday. So get, those, get all the materials into me and we will be just fine. And I just wanted to kind of make everybody aware of that and the need for uh, for getting everything done uh, at, at the appropriate time. I'm going to begin chapter nine. It's called Mind, Body, and Immortality. Dust we are, and the dust we will turn. If you've ever heard that at a funeral service, especially maybe at the graveside, or sometimes it is a liturgy, uh, used by Christians around the world on Ash Wednesday. Dust we are, and to dust we will return. According to most Christian beliefs, returning to dust is what we do after we die. Death is not, though, the end of things, according to most Christians and most people uh, of, a, of a deistic belief. According to the Nicene Creed, which is a Christian creed, there is the belief that res the resurrection comes after death, okay? But even the Hebrew Bible, which basically is made up of the Old Testament, they do predict, the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible does predict a resurrection, minus the Sadducees. The Sadducees were a group or a faction of Jewish belief at the time of Jesus and maybe even a little after that. They believe that what you die, you die. There's no such thing as an afterlife. You're just you're just gone. Period. Okay. But most Jewish people believe that there will be a future resurrection. A Jewish philosopher by the name of Mammonix, or M A M O N I C K S S, he lists he lists, if you will, the belief in the resurrection as one of the thirteen essential beliefs in Judaism. He believes that the resurrection is one of the 13 most important beliefs in the Judaistic faith. Now, most philosophers, and I will say this very carefully, most philosophers refuse to believe in an afterlife. So for them, for them, most world religions, they believe, need to change their core beliefs. Does that make sense? For most philosophers who do not believe in an afterlife, they believe that most world religions need to change, if you will, their core beliefs. Now, belief in an afterlife will depend on the following. What does life after death amount to? It's an interesting question. What does life after death amount to? How do we think about ourselves? Are we purely material beings, or do we have an immaterial soul? How do people survive change after death? Those are legitimate questions that we need to ask ourselves. What does life after death, what might life after death look like? What might it be? That's the next question to begin with. If there's talk about life after death, there has to be some belief, if you will, in a kind of an existence after death. What does everything look like in this existence after death? There are four different views about life after death or the afterlife. One, the first view is no body, no physical body, no mind. We are only, all that's left are the products of our lives. 
The second belief is only our body survives. The third idea is that only our mind survives. And the fourth is both our mind and our body survive in the afterlife. Many people embrace many different ideas about the afterlife. Some Christians maintain, some Christians maintain that after death, the soul exists. I want you to hear this carefully. The soul exists after death, and at a given time, the soul and the body will be reunited. I want you to hang on to that thought for just a second, because I will be sharing with you at the end of this, of this uh, particular lesson, I will be sharing with you my beliefs, and my beliefs are very close to the beliefs that I just shared with you a minute ago. Eastern religions, those of um, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and a few other uh, religions uh, thrown around in there, there is the belief that the body will come back or there will be a life coming back in a new body. That's called reincarnation. Now, what about reincarnation? Answer number one is the ideal of the non-personal existence after death. A person is mostly remembered by those who are left behind. That is one ideal about what happens when a person dies. They are basically left to be the memories of people that knew them and held on to them. They also believe you might go to a place of punishment, for the, but for the most part, they believe, the people that believe this, they believe that you're going to simply exist somewhere. Number two is the idea that some go to an afterlife maintaining a body, but no mind. This is kind of like a zombie. They have they have a body, but they don't have a mind. Answer three is the belief that people survive after death, though disembodied or reincarnated a soul. Number four is the belief by those who adhere to the resurrection, the belief, if you will, that the mind and the body will once again be reunited and exist, if you will, in a new body. Is the belief, is the belief of people who desire a better, non-diseased, non-deformed body that we might carry through this world as we go through this world. There is the question then raised about materialism and dualism. Materialism, let me say this, materialism is the belief that nothing exists. Nothing exists outside of space, time, and material objects in space and time. Let me repeat that. Materialism is the belief that nothing exists out of, outside of space and time and material objects in space and time. Theists, those who believe in God, discount this view because it discounts the existence of God. There are two views of dualism. There, there are two kinds of substance according to dualists, material and immaterial. Idealism is the view that there are no material substances, there are only minds. Idealists believe that there is really nothing beyond anything other than the mind. But there are also people who believe that the mind and body are one with each other. Truth is, much of, the, much of the view of materialism, materialistic ideas and thoughts have really controlled the academic world for many, many years, giving no regard, if you will, to the whole concept of a resurrection. Belief in a resurrection is seen by most of these who do not believe in it, not through a, most of them see the resurrection through a, more, not through a physical lens, but rather through a, or excuse me, not through a spiritual lens, but more through a physical lens. If you are a deist, you look at it more through a spiritual lens and less through a physical lens. So, two questions come out of this. If materialism exists, if materialism exists, then life after death is not believable. If you are a materialistic person, then you cannot believe in a resurrection. Can a resurrected body actually be made up of, of physical materials that were decomposed? That's what they're asking. Are there any 
real arguments for dualism? That's an interesting question. Theism makes a person examine the whole thought of dualism and makes the person seriously support, if you will, the body and the soul viewpoint. So the question is then asked, if death is survivable, if there are immaterial souls, then cannot those souls uh, survive change? And if they're not totally annihilated by God. So the question is asked, if death is survivable, what changes take place in that person after death? Let's talk about arguments for and against survival or life after death. Let's talk about disembodied survival. This is the concept, of, if you will, that a soul may live on after death, but not in any type of bodily form. Then there is the concept of reincarnation. Again, this goes back to a lot of the Eastern religions that if you want to take the class on rural religions, I'll be teaching that in the next, teaching that in the next uh, semester. So you're more than welcome to do that. And a lot of the Eastern religions believe in reincarnation or that a person returns back to this place in a new life after death. The world, they would return in a totally different, uh, distinct body from what he or she had when they were here the first time. Now, some believe that the soul exists. Some Believers in reincarnation believe that the soul exists as disembodied spirits. In other words, they die, their spirit might go somewhere else and be disembodied. And before they're, they're reincarnated into a new form. Most in the Eastern religions do not adhere to that thought, but it is an idea. Karma, we hear that word thrown around a lot these days. Karma is the law saying if you do good, if you do good deeds, if you do good things in this world, then you will achieve a better life for yourself in the next reincarnation. But if you have bad karma, if you do bad things to people, you will come back probably as a lower life form, maybe even an ant that people just try to step on. So just, you know, if you believe in karma, then you do your best deeds to help others especially. Otherwise, you may come back in the next life according to reincarnation as something of a lesser form than a human being. Okay. Now, the other one is resurrection. This is the concept that is very central to the Christian belief. It is also anchored, if you will, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There are two thoughts on resurrection. In, the, in resurrection, there could be a reassembling of some of the body parts from the original body and a new body that's received to death. Now that raises some issues. How many body parts of the, of, of the original body are, are part of the new body? And that also raises the question, what about people that have been, um, who have been buried at sea? Or what, if, what about people who have been cremated and there's really no body left there? What happens in that particular situation? Let me read from the book, page 281. This is a quote from Voltaire, who was a, a French, uh, he was a Frenchman who was also a philosopher. He wrote these words, the soldier from a soldier from Brittany goes into Canada. There, by a very common chance, he finds himself short of food and is forced to eat an Iroquois whom he killed the day before. The Iroquois had fed on Jesuits for two or three months. A great part of his body had become Jesuit. Here then, the body of the soldier is composed of the Iroquois of Jesuits and all that they had eaten before. How, how is each to take again precisely what belongs to him and which parts belong to each? It does raise an interesting question, but I don't think it really makes a difference. My answer to Voltaire is that God decides. God makes the decisions in the end what part is resurrected. And I, this, this, there is also a view that uh, there's a view by many others that, that there are no parts brought back at the resurrection. There's only new ones. In other words, 
at the resurrection, the body, the old parts of the body are no longer in existence, but there is a new body. Totally new. Now, let me share with you my views of the resurrection, and that might help to, uh, to understand where I'm coming from in all of this. First of all, unless we live until the second return of Christ, this is my belief, unless we live until the second return of Jesus Christ, all of us are going to die. Everybody will die sometime. We cannot escape it. If it had not been for the embalming, uh, embalming procedures that are done after death, our bodies would decompose a lot faster. But when our bodies are buried, they will lay there. Our souls at that moment when we die, our souls immediately go to heaven and are, 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 sent, are brought to heaven, if you will, by Christ himself to spend that time with him. At the time of the second coming, the scripture reminds us that there will be a horn blowing by Gabriel the archangel. And at the blowing of that horn, all of the bodies that have been buried, all the bodies that have been seed, all the bodies that have been cremated, all the bodies that have decomposed, will once again be brought back together with the soul that comes from heaven. And it will create, if you will, a new a new heavenly body. Now, I like this idea because I have to tell you, when when I married my wife, I got with it a burial plot, which is about a mile from where I live. My father-in-law bought all of his son-in-law's burial plots. Now, in my burial plot, I married the oldest daughter. So you have her father, her mother, me, then my wife, and then down the line. Now, do you do you understand the unfortunate part of that? If I believed in certain things, I would believe that I would be spending all of eternity between my wife and my mother-in-law, and I know if that happens, I'm never going to get any rest. But I do believe in a bodily resurrection, and when Jesus Christ comes back and the horn blows, I tell everybody I'm out of there. So that's my belief in the resurrection. My Christian belief, I come at my beliefs from a firm belief in what the Bible says. Now, that is the end of the lecture. I know it wasn't very long, but it was a very short chapter. I want you, again, to remember that your tests that were sent tonight will be due back by Friday, along with your essays. Once I receive those, I will grade them and I will get them all back to you. I, your final will be sent to you and it will just be on this chapter. But your final will be sent back to you on Friday. And I expect you to have it done and sent back to me by Tuesday at noon so that I can grade them and have all the grades in to the registrar so that your grades might be counted. Again, thank you for sharing with me in this class. I hate that we had to do it in such a way as we have had to do it, but I'm hoping that everybody is well. And I again, next, uh, next, uh, I, call it, I call it a semester. It's really not a, a semester, but then the next class is going to be taught. I will be teaching world religions. I love world religions. I have studied it quite a bit. I probably know more about that than I did philosophy of religion. But if you would like to take the class, if you would want to take the class, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm looking forward to it. I've enjoyed my time with you guys, and I wish you well.